Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line. Find this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing the original version of the Audemars Royal Oak Offshore. This is the reference 25770ST. The 770 was the original strap-clad model, and that's important because back in the 90s, the strap attached to the case in a fashion different from the bracelet, so they're not interchangeable. This uses the earlier junction without the two intermediate links. As a result, it actually wears easier on a small wrist than those later versions of the watch. Let's throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and get a sense of how it wears. So it is 42 millimeters in diameter, 14.1 millimeters thick, and from lug to lug, the end-to-end -end distance across the wrist is 53.6 millimeters. The watch has an imposing presence. It's oversized today. It must have seemed enormous by the standards of 1993 when the original model hit the market. Taking a quick look, you can see that the watch is big. I'd recommend it for wrists no smaller than 15 centimeters circumference, but I do think that you have more viability on those smaller wrists because of the way the strap interfaces with the case. I think you'd need a bigger wrist than 15 centimeters to wear this if it were the bracelet model from the period or the later strap versions with the intermediate links. The strap is bespoke, so if you want to replace the strap, you're going to have to go OEM or go with a custom piece from the aftermarket. As you can see then as now, the strap held to the case using screws and bars rather than the cheaper but less secure springboard setup. Taking a quick look, we'll remove the clasp. The strap is large rectangular scale alligator leather in a semi-gloss finish with some stuffing or bolstering to add volume. You can see that the edge of the strap is folded. It has a monotone black stitch on the bottom calfskin, and this is a brand new AP factory strap. We have the old AP single fold logo style buckle, so you can see it says Audemars Piguet externally. There is a double AP logo inside. It is a friction fit or snap shut clasp. Taking a quick look, you can see that the strap is designed to look well integrated. It has a flare to it that matches the splayed out word thrust of the lugs in the case. So you can see the lines of one continue unabated into the lines of the other. The case is in excellent shape. As you can see, the break between satin and polish remains razor-like. And this watch, though it has been back to the factory for service and refinishing in its lifetime, maintains outstanding case definition, finish definition, corner-to-corner -corner symmetry, and metal volume. And these are the things you always look for on a Royal Oak or an Offshore to tell whether it has been professionally refinished. Taking a quick look at the crown guard structure, you can see that there's micro beveling on the edge of the crown guards themselves. Attention to detail is strong here. You have just as much hand finishing on this case as you would on a traditional Royal Oak. We have these little polymer covers for the chronograph pushers and the shoulder for the crown. Note that the crown shoulder and polymer is hexagonal, just like the bolts inside the bezel of the Offshore, just like the bolts inside the bezel of the traditional Royal Oak. Of course, the original Royal Oak of 1972, designed by designer Gerald Genta, and then the Offshore, which came to market in 1993, was designed by a young Emmanuel Get. Taking a look, you can see that the bezel remains the rounded octagon, inspired in 1972 by a vintage diving helmet, and the bolts on an Offshore are always going to be steel. On a Royal Oak, they're gold. On an Offshore, they're steel. They are hexagonal within the octagon, and then inboard, we have a period correct petite tapisserie hobnail dial. Now, later on, the offshores would gain what was called the mega tapisserie, which is a large hobnail, a huge hobnail, in fact. That one is stamped. These original petite dials are actually cut on a pantograph lathe, so they're made with the old-fashioned 19th century mimicry engine, and at the time, they were made by a company called Sternfrer, which traced its roots back to the Stern family of Patek Philippe fame. So there are a lot of fun historical associations with this dial, both because the original offshore and the original Royal Oak had a very similar dial design and because of the stern connection. Now, later on, the large hobnail would replace this and a lot of the features of the dial would change. The old blob-style indices, which you see here, would go away and the baton hands would go away as well. Now, we'll do a quick loom shot, as you can see. 
This watch is a Luminova dial. There is plenty of luminescence. It uses the blue dial base, and as you can see, attention to detail is strong with a tachymeter featuring a brushed metallic grain, and the individual registers feature both inner and outer polished chapter rings. It's a very attractive dial, a feature that would be a long time standard on the Royal Oak, the sunken date, because the base movement, a JLC 889, sits underneath the Dubois de Praz 2840 chronograph module, so you're actually looking through the chrono module down to the base movement, which is where the date is located. Now, in terms of functions, the DD module includes a vertical clutch, so engagement of the chronograph is super smooth. There's no extraneous movement to the seconds hand because there is no play in a vertical clutch. You can use the tachymeter to gauge the speed of something going very fast because it's calibrated between 560 units, unless you're good with mental decimals. It's going to be a race car or an airplane, and of course, you you do that using the chronograph. Now, because of the JLC base movement, we have bi-directional automatic winding, a 38 to 40 hour power reserve. We have a stop seconds function. Let's make sure we're not in the date change danger zone, as we say. And then we also have a quick set system to rapidly set the calendar. Now, the watch can be fit on a water-resistant strap, and with a screw-down crown, it is 100 meters water-resistant. Underneath the case back, we have that combination of JLC base and DD module. The JLC is five-position adjusted. It is a 36-joule base movement. The compound movement module and base is 54 joules. Beats away at eight beats per second. It is a thin, fine, high horology caliber. And it's important to note that back when this watch was made in the 90s, JLC was 40% owned by Audemars Piguet. And Audemars Piguet's stake allowed AP to essentially use JLC movements as a sort of in-house deal. And the link between AP and LeCoultre goes back to the 19th century. They're actually neighbors in the Watch Valley. So the use of a JLC and prior to that LeCoultre movement in an AP watch was a hallowed and well-established tradition. JLC movements are as good as it gets. Uh, this timepiece has it all going on. Beautiful condition and a rare and somewhat unheralded style with the strap on the first generation case design. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this E-Series Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore.